Good morning. Happy to have you all here today in person. I have four people in the studio. It feels like we're getting back to normal and lots of people on screen. So thanks for coming. Um, today, I want to talk about your heart. And I'm not talking about the physical beating heart, although it's, it, it coincides with that. Um, it's the, the heart space. So from a yoga perspective, we say we have a heart center. Um, it's the space behind your breastbone in the center of your chest that holds all your hopes and desires and dreams and, and supports you from the inside. It's kind of like the, the center point that everything spreads out from. So physically, uh, the, the heart, the heart space, I'm going to show you on my friend. Physically, I don't know if we can say physically where the heart space is, but somewhere in here, you can see my fist in here. Uh, and if you look what's happening on the body, so we've got this really good protective uh, basket called a rib cage, but basket maybe is a little bit more appropriate because it's kind of flexible. And then we've got scapula or shoulder blades back here. So I want to think about the scapula being the support for the back of this, this space. And if you'll notice, I don't know if he's too close, another, another male in the room. Uh, oh, and his leg just fell off. <laughs> so you can see, can you see that? Like arm bone, the humerus is connected to the scapula. So our arms, I've done this before, said this before, but our arms are connected to the back of the body. So I really want to focus on that as a, as, as a, as a practice, as a point of focus today uh, with whatever we do, feeling like are your arms more in the front of the body or are they more in the back of the body? So I'm gonna move him and his leg out of here. And you're gonna to need to have a bolster or two throw pillows and a chair today, plus a couple of blankets. And this is how we're gonna set up. I'm gonna show you if you have a bolster, you're gonna lay your bolster down this way. If you don't, you're gonna lay your two throw pillows in that place like that. We just need a width. So your bolster goes across and then take one of your blankets, fold it in half and it goes across this way. So that's with the bolster. Here's with your two throw pillows. Then your, your second blanket, morning Deb from Alberta, from Edmonton, my sister. Uh, there. I kind of like, I've tested it out this morning. And I kind of like the throw pillows too, because they're squishy. So your bolster will go across your mat if you don't have the throw pillows. If you have both, you know, and want to try the throw pillows. If you have really huge throw pillows, maybe it won't work so much. And then <clears throat> we're going to lay, I'm going to say lay on your right side first only just so I can have a pointing, a talking point. <laughs> and take this, I have a headset here, so I have to maneuver around it, but I'm gonna stretch my arm out. If this is not great for your arm, have it bent like this. And we would just wanna be in a position where you are feeling opening through the side of the body around your rib cage. So you might have to adjust where you are on the prop to get that feeling of opening up a little bit through your waist and through your rib cage, instead of letting your waist sink down. And then we'll stay here for, for a short time. And what I wanna focus on, first of all, is find where your scapula are. Those shoulder blades, this might be better. And so you can have your legs bent or they can have them out straight. Whatever, whatever gives you, adjust so that you have this, this opening up. So we've got compression through the bottom of the body. So the right side is compressed and shortened. The left side is expanded. And so we can direct the breath here. Imagine now that you are leaning against a wall. So lean back until you feel you have lined up the back of your body. You can just rest your top arm on your body, but you can also take it up like this and reach it up overhead, again, in line with your body. 
which it just gives you a little bit more expansion through the top part of the rib cage. But if shoulder's not happy here, you can always prop your hand up like this. And breath will change, for sure breath will change. But you can't really take a deep breath into the right side. So breathe into the left side. I, I want to create some awareness around the side of the body, but also I want to have the rib cage start to move a little bit more. Remember I said it was a rib basket. And the ribs come right up into your armpits, right up just the top rib is just above your collarbones. So breathe however works for you. If you want to go deeper, you can go deeper. If you want to keep it light. But the emphasis is on the top side of the body, the left side. And if you can move towards having equal breath, inhales and exhales the same length, that would be ideal. But if it's too much at any time, any time we, we pay attention to the breath and it's too much, you can change at any time or come out of the pose at any time. So as we lean back into the back body, we invite the breath to move more into the left side of the body. Lung expands a little bit easier there. Rib cage starts to expand. There's muscles in between each rib. So if you're eating ribs, that's what you're eating. Not human, of course, I hope. But also have this idea, this, this imagery of where your heart space is. And imagine it as a, a light. You can color it whatever you want to color it, but it's untouched. It's not squished or squeezed. It's still expanding. And it has more of an ability to expand now towards the left side, because that's what's open. And maybe even rays of light shoot out through the side of your body, the left side. My head might not be completely lined up, but that's only because I've got a headset here. I'm trying to avoid. Allow your breath to settle into a pattern that, that there, where there's some ease to it. <clears throat> And it's, it's sometimes hard to remember that, um, that we're supported from the inside when we rely so heavily on, on people around us and uh, professionals to help us. And we look for help more outside of ourselves. And if we turn inward, if we acknowledge the, that the heart has so much to offer, Hold so much for you. You'll see that you have the strength. The strength that you have comes from there as well. The strength on so many levels. Let's just take five more breaths here. Great practice too. The practice today is great for. Um, any kind of curvature of the spine, scoliosis in particular, that kind of curvature. So one side, if that's you, and you know who you are, one side might feel like it's easier than the other. And anyone might feel that. I'm like, oh, okay, there's, that's interesting. I'm tighter on one side than the other. Okay, so then if you're, if you're still in the pose, take your top arm, let's bring it down. start to slowly roll your body, your upper body towards the floor so you can bring your hands to the floor and come up. And before we go to the second side, see if you can set up your hands around your props into a table pose to just feel, just to notice. So instead of moving at all, we're just gonna be here and feel, notice and feel.
I feel like my left side's way longer <laughs> than my right. And just take a couple more breaths here, tuning into whatever it is that you feel. Where are your shoulder blades? Where's your heart space? You know, even though arms are in front of the body, shoulder blades are on your back. And we've connected shoulder blades and arms through that back plane. And take a couple of bigger breaths here before we go to the second side. And, and notice if when you breathe and breathe into the back and the sides of your ribs, does the left side expand more? Left lung is just a little bit smaller than the right side because the, the, your physical heart encroaches on its space in its space. Just notice whatever you notice, there's no right or wrong. And then we'll come to the other side. So I'm gonna turn around so I still face you. Gotta be even. One of the things about teaching online like this is because I have to demonstrate for everybody at home, I get to do the practice, <laughs> which typically I don't. I don't do all of it. So it's kind of, it's kind of been nice. So however, whatever works for your shoulder, if this is better or a block under here, under your head is better, a block in the blanket or here with your top arm on, on your body and find that, that space, the place where you can lean back as if you're leaning into a wall might be further back than you think it is. And you have the option to take your arm and reach it up and overhead. You can prop it with your bottom hand. And it's where you wanna be opening up, creating length. There'll be a little bit of a sensation of stretch, maybe a lot for some, but I'm focusing on this part, the, rib, the ribs part. So if you have a longer torso, you might need to scoot away from your the head side a little bit. And then we lay here, we, you find your breath. That's the opposite of, of the other side, of course. I'm gonna come and peek at everybody. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Kathy, you can bring your arm alongside your, your body if, because then, because then, what's happening is where your arm is positioned, it's, it's bowing you forward a little bit. So we're leaning back, but not leaning so far back that you're leaning onto your back. You're staying on your side, because one of the poses we're moving towards is side plank. And I want you to have a sense while you're fully supported, what that feels like to line yourself up that way. So you can do deeper breath or natural breath and then start to move your breath towards equal in length. I always forget to say this, but at home, you can put music on if you want. <clears throat> Let your breath settle into a pattern. Notice what's happening. Notice the side of the body. Left side's down, right side's expanding. Is it expanding? Do you have the ability, the understanding of how to direct your breath? to the right side. So if I'm working with someone one-on-one -on -one and I might say, hey, breathe into the back ribs. And very often they say, I don't know how to do that. This is an opportunity while you're here for a little while, fully supported to go, do I know how to direct my breath to this side of the body? 
Do I feel like my ribs are spreading? Can I do that? You know, we started at more, a more subtle place. You, you might try shifting a little bit, bring your hips down a little bit this way, Dean. Like this, this way. Move towards this end of your mat. Yep. Different? Yeah. So if you're feeling it more in your waist, not able to direct it to your rib cage, slide towards the foot end of your mat a little bit more. Great practice. This is a great pose to go into any time of day. Great uh, laying on your left side if you've just eaten a meal, <laughs> maybe not quite so uh, intrusive, but laying on your left side because your stomach is on your left. Just a couple more breaths here. And then we'll come back up again. So from the side, turn towards the floor so you can place your hands. Lift yourself up, come back into table. We're gonna be here for a little bit so, and you can take your props out of the way. So if, if it's valuable, put a blanket down for your knees. I just wanna take a, a few moments to also set hands because if we're moving to side plank, we're gonna be standing on our hands. And when you just place your hands down, they're gonna go wherever, wherever you put them, where, wherever they fall. And that's, to me, that's a little bit problematic in most yoga classes because you know nobody talks about the hands and, and it, they're kind of like feet. And so we have arches in our feet and we wanna be able to treat our hands like that too. So we're not just sinking and, and going into wrists. So I, I'd like you to see this whole rim around the edge of your hand the edge of your palm like this and, and start at your knuckle and get every one of these knuckles and the outside edge all the way down here to your, maybe a little space here, but to your thumb pad and around to here, I'd like you to press all that part into the floor. And then once you have an idea of that, so index fingers, middle, I wanna keep all of that connected onto the floor and then feel how there's a lift to the center. I've got my elbows bent to do this. And then I'm gonna lay down my index finger and press into my fingerprints. So that's the next point of contact I'm interested in. Then middle fingerprint, then ring fingerprint and baby fingerprint, thumb fingerprint. So now I have energy where I didn't have it before. Then I can straighten my arms and see, do I feel like my elbows are turning out? Do I feel like I've set my hands up to be able to keep my, my arms long? So keep that in mind as we go through the practice today. And then see, does that give you less pressure into parts of your wrist that you might've felt before? So keep that action just in a, in a gentle way, be, be gentle with your hands and start to move, move through your spine. I like to roll back and come forward. rounding through my spine as I go back, dropping my head, coming forward. I'm gonna let you kind of play a little bit. Creating awareness through your spine now, you know, maybe going incrementally through your spine as you move back and then incrementally as you come forward and you sink your spine into your body. So it can be a typical cat cow. I kind of have moved away from that because I just feel like, why would I do that when I can get so much more movement moving forward and back as well? So much more awareness. And then come back into the center and we'll do the tail wag. So wag your tail from side to side. So it's really just a question of shortening one side of your body then shortening the other side of the body. So similar to what we did on the, on the props, imagine you have props on one side and you're opening and expanding. 
it's funny to watch guys do this. <laughs> There's a lot of body swaying from side to side. It's just your pelvis moving. So bring your, your hip towards your armpit and then back into the center and your other hip towards your armpit. Kind of let your head and your shoulders just follow the, the movement. I say that's wagging the tail, but you might think it's something else. Yeah, so keep your arms and your head relatively still, but let the movement happen in your, in your pelvis. Okay, so we've kind of gone this way and this way. Let's kind of add in um, a circular movement. So in the middle, just circle around like your body is like a barrel and you're rolling it. Elbows can bend. Just conditioning your hands a little bit. If, if you've forgotten how you were setting your hands up and working them, or they're feeling fatigued, fatigue is okay because they're working. Well, you don't feel like that pain, that pain that you might feel normally in your wrists. Okay, then come back into the center again, and you can come off your hands. Put your blanket aside. You can have it as a pillow if you need to. We'll use these pillows again, or the bolster and the pillows again, and come back and lay on your back. Gather both your legs up and bring them in towards you and rock a little from side to side. So again, you can notice when you rock a little side to side, do you feel like the bump? Is it smooth from side to side? Do you have a sense of how your spine sits in your body? And come back to this idea again of your heart space. What do you hope for yourself? What are you passionate about? When you are strong emotionally, that's, that's all from this space. So it's kind of like we're, we're doing a practice today to, to become aware and not, not only become aware, but support it from the outside, protect it and honor it. Okay, bring one leg in, doesn't matter which one and take the other one out. Little arm and arm, four corners of the body and then switch. You can have your hands around your shin or underneath your knee if that feels better for you. Take your time. You know, it's always the process. It's never the destination that I'm looking for you to experience. Because once you're there, who cares? It's what happens as you slowly move through this. Because it changes every second. My other sister just wrote a blog about being bored, which was interesting. She, she gave a lot of references about us as kids, <laughs> what we did when we were bored. <laughs> I think since I've discovered yoga, and I know I've said this to you, I'm never bored. <laughs> There's always so much to discover by slowing things down and observing. Okay, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna add on to this. So one leg is out, take your arms and reach overhead. And then bring your other leg in. Actually, I'm changing that up. Bring your hands down to hold on to your opposite leg and stretch your leg out. So, when, okay, here. <laughs> Don't do as I say, do as I do. <laughs> Release the leg that you have in your hands and stretch your arms out. I was just having a brain blip. <laughs> so we're fully open, arms and legs. Then a leg comes in, arms come down. There we go. Got it. Again, breathing. This is the four corners of the body moving in this one plane, feel your shoulder blades, whether you lift them up or circle your arms out to the sides. Can you feel your shoulder blades because you're resting on them? We're getting a good sense of what it feels like to line your arms up through the back of the body or not. And one more time, Took long enough to get there. <laughs> stretch out, fully stretch, yawn maybe. And then release, bring your arms down where they feel comfortable and separate your feet, bending your knees and set your feet as wide as your mat. 
Now, windshield wipers, we've done this before, but I want you to focus on your feet in this windshield wipers. So knees tip over towards the left. You're rolling onto the outside edge of your left foot and the inside edge of your right foot. So you're gonna keep your feet in line with your ankles because typically we keep the feet down. So I'd like you to keep them so that they're moving with them. So really it's more about your feet today because as we move to side plank or vashistasana, we need to know where the sides of our feet are. Again, creating awareness here. If you feel like this is too wide a position, you can change your feet to bring them closer together. So yeah, we're getting movement in the hips, but the point of this is that sensation that you're feeling in your feet as you roll from one edge to the other. And we're not rolling into the ankles. I'll see if I can do that. I don't know if it's possible here, but in side plank, sometimes it's rolling into the ankles like this. That's not helpful. We wanna be right on the side of the foot. So I feel like there's an energy, a strength in the feet. And in some poses, well, some of this is coming from last Wednesday's class. Some poses, we need to have the feet down. So now keep your, your soles of your feet down, similar to what we did with hands, feel the arches in your feet and let your knees go side to side, let your hips go, but keep your feet flat. And I don't like the word flat, but keep your feet stationary. How about that? So we have movement in the ankles now. Just so we can tell the difference. And we get some movement through the spine too. Okay, then take your arms right out to the sides. Keep that rocking action, but lift your legs up and rock your legs from side to side. You can flex at your feet, whatever works for you to keep your legs together. If you wanna put a blanket in between here, you can. Notice if your knees are starting to come apart or, or your, your legs are sliding, just go in the range of motion. There's no goal here. The range of motion that allows you to move through your rib cage. We're still working on that. Flexibility in the rib cage is huge because that's where we breathe, but that's where that heart space is too. So it's not about how big you can do this. It's how, how much awareness you can create. I'm keeping my shoulders where they are and I'm allowing my body to rotate. I think we get so, so caught up in, in a, a feeling of stretch, stretch sensation. And it's not really a good measurement of anything, good or bad. Depends on how good the stretch is. But that's not always, doesn't always mean it's, it's something that's of benefit to you. <laughs> okay, come back into the center. Bring your feet back down, stretch your legs out, stretch your arms out, nice long pose. One more thing here before we leave here. If you're okay to keep your arms overhead, keep them overhead. If not, you can take them back out to the side, it's not essential. And walk your feet over towards the right. They can even go off your mat. Then lift up your left leg and without rolling your body, take your leg and cross it over. So your, your left ankle crosses your right. Then you can slide your upper body in the same direction so that you're a big banana. So over towards the right. And I'm gonna hold on to my left wrist. And I wanna keep my shoulder blades on the floor as I do this. So it's a little bit more intense version of what we did at the beginning. So I'm holding on to my wrist, I'm squeezing at my ankles and I'm gonna pull my hands and my feet away from each other but I still wanna breathe. If I can't breathe, then that might be too far. If I can't keep my body here with my shoulder blades on the floor, it might be too far. You can kind of see the shape we're moving towards. When else do you get to open up through the side of the body like this, except for in yoga? 
Where is that light shining out from the heart space? One more breath here. Notice if one side's easier than the other. Come back into the center, uncrossing your legs. Just notice for a moment, you can take your arms back down if they are up. Shoulder blades on the floor. We've got the support. We've got gravity helping keep the arms connected to the back of the body. Just for a moment, feel that connection from the back of one hand through that arm all the way through the back of the shoulder, shoulder blade, shoulder blade on the other side, arm and out to your other hand, the back of the other hand. Okay, let's take legs over to the other side. So I'm walking them over to the left, lift up your right, cross it. You can be here and arc your body over, no problem. Or you can come up overhead. I'm holding on to my right wrist this time. My right foot or ankle crosses over my left. And I wanna see, did I, did I turn and lift the whole side of my body off the floor? Can I keep my shoulder blade down on the right side? And in doing that, I'm really more focused through the side of the body. For now, it's not to say we can't do it that way, but this is, I'm just focusing on this part. And then you can pull your hands and feet away from each other in a gentle way. There's no breath holding or gripping anywhere. Let me. Okay. Then make your way back into the center. Okay, then come back, bend your knees, come back to kneel. If you need the blanket, put the blanket under. My plan. Set up your hands again. So we had time in between. Can we still do the same thing? I go as wide as my shoulders and I'm looking for even space on both sides of the wrist. Instead of a hand turned in, it's shorter on this side and longer on this side. I want it to be even because there's potential for shearing the bones, the way the bones sit, the shearing of, of ligaments in there. So the rim of the palm, then each of your fingerprints, the rest of the fingers, they don't have to stay connected. Notice that gives you that little bit of lift. And then we're gonna sink between the shoulder blades, but without moving the low back. So breathe in here. And as you exhale, feel the subtle toning of your abdomen. I'm not gonna say pull your belly button to your spine. I just don't believe that that's a great instruction. Inhale, let your belly release towards the floor. And then as you exhale, notice the toning that happens in the low belly. It's not that we're trying to make it happen. Just allow it to happen. You want to close, if you want to close your eyes, you can. So it's a way of finding stability through the low back. And when you find that place where you feel it affecting your low back in a subtle way, supporting, so you're not in this, this arched position, hold it there, but keep breathing and then start to move between your shoulder blades. So we're trying to get the shoulder blades to move towards each other and then move away from each other. So we sink and we lift. Very often what I see happen is there's a lot of shrugging that happens around the base of the neck. So we're not doing that. We wanna have movement lower. And I showed you where the shoulder blades are. So see if you can find that place in your body. Easy here to put a lot of weight into the outer wrist. So stay connected a little bit more into your index finger, the base of your index finger and your index finger print. Okay. 
Okay, one more time. And hold here. Okay, I'm going to ask for almost the impossible here. Stay connected. Stay on your hand, in your right hand, and both your legs, whatever is connected, and come to your left fingertips. And notice as you transition, notice that toning in your abdomen. So I'm not putting a lot of weight. It's just for balance, like a kickstand. I'm not changing uh, the the shape of my body. I'm just noticing. And then what, if you're okay here, so you can stay here if you find, you know what, this is a lot of work or start to take your left arm out to the side and bring it up so that you feel that connection of your shoulder blade on your back. And then a little bit of a pull from your fingertips towards your shoulder blade. Like it's a plugging in action. This is your core work. <laughs> Two more breaths here. And then bring your arm back down. Pause, breathe. Set your left hand back up again. So breathe in, breathe out, feel the toning in your abdomen. Without gripping or bracing, come up onto your right fingertips, pause here. So we're gonna stay here for a couple of breaths like we did on the first side. And figuring out how to hold this without going into a pattern of compensation that you might always, like arching your back or sinking into your shoulder. You wanna almost keep everything identical. Then if it's okay to lift your right arm up, Get a sense that you are bringing your arm up in line with your body. You know, you can play with this. Go too far. Feel what it feels like on your back. Then not far enough. And then find that place, that perfect place where you feel, yeah, my arm is coming from my shoulder blade. And it's like your shoulder blade becomes this little hand that's, that's supporting the back of your heart. That's saying, yeah, everything's okay. That arm weighs a lot. So if you keep reaching out through your fingertips, it'll feel heavier. But if you pull from your fingertips towards your shoulder, just ever so slightly, like you're plugging it in, notice that that feels stronger in the shoulder joint. If you notice that, and then come back down. Okay, tuck your toes under. No, come down onto your side. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing here. Come down onto your side, sit on your right hip, and slide your right arm out. Now, if again, if this is not great for your shoulder, you're gonna do, you're gonna have your arm tucked this way. This is probably the best. You can have a pillow. But arm is long. And, and if you guys need to turn your mats at all, you got lots of space to see to be able to turn to see me. So I'm gonna lay on my arm. Again, you can have a, a blanket here if you need to. So we're lining up the side of the body. I'm not so concerned about where my hips are right now. This is a pose called Anantasana, or Vishnu's couch. Just wait, it gets more fun. <laughs> so I wanna get a sense that I'm balancing on the side of my body. I'm creating as much length as I can through my rib cage and my armpit as I possibly can. Have your left hand in front of you, kind of like your kickstand holding you, and then straighten out your legs if you haven't already. And your legs are lining up with your body. So you're gonna need that little kickstand here. Notice if you're leaning forward or leaning back. Stack your feet so that you are resting on the outside edge of your right foot, not in your ankle. And then your, your left foot is resting on the inside edge. And the soles of your feet are open and looking towards the wall that they're facing. Yeah, a little bit of a balance challenge here for sure. Now, are you more forward or are you more back? The only way to find out, I think for sure, is to roll forward and roll back and find that place in the middle. Now this is an option here. You can start to lift your head up and bring your right hand underneath. This is the TV watching pose. So now you're supporting your head like this. 
my I haven't moved my arm. I'm lifting and supporting. But now I don't want to compress the side, the left side of my neck. So I'm going to press into my hand to open up this space. Yeah, you got it, Brad. So now you're getting the shape. Maybe even start to press into your elbow if you're in this position and start lifting the right side of your rib cage away from the floor. Couple of breaths here. Legs are active and reaching out. I'm not gonna ask you to take away the kickstand. We've all done this a thousand times, especially as teenagers. <laughs> and then slowly bring your rib cage back down. Take your arm back out. Roll onto your back. Notice one side, the other side. Subtle differences and maybe big differences. We have a second side. Okay, so stretch out your arm. So if, if arm is an issue, this is probably the best, you know, you're gonna do some variation of this, of supporting this way. But if your arm's okay, it's going up here. Bigger than what we need for side plank, but we're going here anyway. So I'm lining it up. I'm lining up my arm with my body. And my legs are bent to start just to kind of get this stable. Kickstand in front, that's my hand. And then I go straight legs. I'm on the outside. I'm consciously choosing to set up on the outside of my left foot. My right foot stacks on top of it. And it's as if I'm pushing my feet into a wall. So most of us, I'm gonna say, push forward through your big toe base. Then you can stay here or stay here or lift up. Either way, lift up, head lifts up, hand tucks under, supports your head. Then you lengthen the right side of your neck this way. So from here to here. Then third part, press into your elbow and lift your rib cage off the floor. I think so often in yoga practices, we get, I'm gonna say we get thrown into poses without knowing how to do them. And so we, we create these compensatory um, alignments and movements just to survive rather than to actually get anything from them. I shouldn't say that, probably do get something from it, but it probably creates more <laughs> more issues than anything and then slowly come back down okay come on up time to come into tadasana you can set up your blank your blocks at the front of your of your mat for uttanasana or standing forward bend let's just swing arms but just like pendulum, you can take them up or not. I want you to have a little bit of free freedom. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> yeah. That's my sister. <laughs> just swing your arms around. <laughs> okay. And then bring them overhead, interlace your palms and turn them up. Separate your feet so that you feel enough that you feel like you've got a really good sturdy support and base. And you're not going into any, any compensation in your body. You're allowing your body to be long. We'll just pause here for a moment and breathe. So now we've opened up both sides. With the palms pushing up just slightly, we've got a, a, an ability to lift the pelvis up uh, or lift the rib cage up off the pelvis. And not just at the front, which is a tendency for most people, we want to lift it up off the back, the whole, the whole rib cage. Couple of breaths. And then take your arms over to the left, your, your left, my right. 
And you're not pulling down on your head. Now you're lifting up through your elbow. So I'm still pushing your palms out, but start to arc over. So hips go that way towards your right. So again, just changing the, the orientation to the earth, the same stuff we're doing. I'm not leaning forward, I'm not leaning back. Come back up, press up. Yeah, if it's too much, come down, come over. So notice if you shortened again through the back of the ribs. So we're up here, so we keep lifting the back ribs up. Okay, slowly come back up. If breath is challenging there, you're too far. And just the pendulum again. And then stand, Tadasana, whatever version you want where your feet need to be. And just notice when you stand and, and let your arms fall from your body. Are they falling from the front of the body or are they falling from the back of the body? Just notice where they go, where's, what's your go-to? Is it more of a feeling of, yeah, they're in the front of the body or is it a feeling of the back of the body? And then wherever it happened, they happen to be, move them so that you get more of a sense of them connecting to the back of your body. You have that, that ability here too, to engage through this corset of the body. It's like we're drawing the sides of the waist in and then slowly lift your arms up, but lift them from your shoulder blades. Have an awareness of where your heart space is and your shoulder blades moving and they'll move outward like this as they go out to the sides. And then pause here. Turn your palms forward and just feel that big wingspan, that connection from fingertips to fingertips through the back of your body. If you're feeling it more through the front of the body, start to move your arms back a little bit. Not so much your hands back like this, but more, watch how I'm plugging my shoulder. And I don't know if you can see it from the side. I'm moving my shoulder blades back and then bringing my arms in line. So I want my shoulder blades back there and then hands. We get into a pattern where shoulder blades are forward. And that often happens in triangle pose too. Just stay here for a few more moments, noticing how challenging it is to hold your arms up. I remember teacher, gym teacher in grade eight had us do this to the song, Windy. <laughs> or Wendy, I guess it was Wendy. And we had to do this and we had to do this. We had to keep adding stuff to it and he wouldn't let us put our arms down. So now add just a little bit of pull from your fingertips towards you like you're trying to bring your shoulder blades a little bit closer like i'm going to say two millimeters closer that's how gentle so we get this this ability to sense where the shoulder blades are without having to be in the high risk position where the high stakes are I should say yeah it's a lot isn't it because other muscles want to take over and the one the muscles that need to do this work don't want to do the work Okay, let's drop. Yeah, there's other muscles involved too, for sure. Okay, come forward to your blocks. How are we for time? Loads of time. Forward bend. So I'm going to suggest that we all bend our knees. You set your feet up. What works for you? Knees need to face forward though. And bring your hands to your blocks. Come into half Ardha Chandrasana. So half, or sorry. <laughs> Half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. So your spine is an extension. You might need to be higher. You might even need to be on a chair. So we want to find extension in the spine and, and not, not have to have the legs straight, but moving the legs in the direction towards straight. So you start to release a little bit through your hamstrings. And in the center of the muscles, rather than through the knees, I'm going to feel that sense of yeah, more in the center. Couple of breaths. 
still in this position, whatever position it happens to be for you, bend your right knee more. Let your pelvis drop, that's okay. And with your right knee bent more, lift up through your sit bone on the left side. It might not be a lot. It's definitely doesn't have to go straight, but I just want to feel that it's a different experience. You take one leg away and do the other, do the opposite side. A little rotation through the spine. And then let's change sides. So bend both knees, come back into the center or wherever you happen to be, then bend left leg more and lift so your left your right heel is on the floor you're not lifting it away from the floor you're moving your sit bone away from your heel you might feel it in your calf a little bit back of the leg spine is long so notice where your head is is your head just hanging off your spine not ideal so many things see you can't be bored <laughs> If you're ever bored, just get on your yoga mat and just do stuff. And then come back into the little, seriously, that's what my whole practice is about. I just do stuff. I don't even know what I'm gonna do till I'm there. So now bring your blocks back a little bit, slide or step your right foot back. Uh, you may need a blanket under your knee here. So pull your blanket or cushion in, and then we come up. We've done this so many times, I love it though. Hand to the outside of your thigh. I'm pressing my hand inward and I'm pressing my thigh outward. So I'm keeping it stable in the same place as I shift forward and back. So taking what we were doing on our backs, the wind expeller pose, and just moving the, the hips a little bit differently, but in that same plane, more into a hip flexor stretch on the back leg. This is a means to an end, of course. I'm gonna be on this side because of what we're doing next. So my leg might wanna turn into the center, but I'm gonna keep it guiding it this way. And it, there's no destination. It's, it's where, what do you need as you go forward and back? What is the rhythm you have between your thigh, your pelvis and your rib cage? Does it feel like it's working together or it's going eh. <laughs> rib cage disconnects from your pelvis? Okay, one last time. And then back into the center. Now bring your hands down to your blocks. You're gonna turn your back knee. So you might need to lift it. I'm sorry, not to your back knee. You're turning your back foot to the left. I want to keep this leg where it is. So how far I go depends on, on how open my hips are. Then I come back up. So now I have myself in a position where if I continue doing this practice, I'm not going this way. I've abducted my leg. So same thing. Because it can't all be about the side body. Yeah. Same thing though here, my leg wants to go here even more so, so I need to, to be aware and press it out. I also wanna be aware of what's happening on this side of my body. Okay, last one. That way looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn on the side of my left foot and stretch it out, slide it out. I'm gonna move my block so you can see. I'm gonna slide it away from me so I'm on the inside edge. I'm not on my ankle, but I'm on the edge of my foot. The outer edge is lifted off. Then reach down to the ground on this side. In line as much as you can with your foot, adjust your right knee if you need to, and take it as far forward as you need to so that you feel, you get a sense that you are not like this, but you're more like that, like what we were doing when we were standing. So this arm, to get that relationship between, between the body and the arm, probably needs to go further ahead than you think it does. So our first weight bearing here. 
Yeah, can you go further out, uh, Brad? Like hand further away? You can go right off your mat. The mat is just an arbitrary thing. Now stay here for a couple of breaths more. Lean into the back of your body like we've been doing all practice. Even your head. And if it helps too, you can take your top arm and lift it up and find that wingspan. Remember the feeling of your shoulder blades connecting to your arms and your arms connecting to each other. Okay. Okay. Slowly bring your left hand down, push yourself up, come back into this. Turn your leg, move it towards straight. Lift your right arm up and your left palm up and lean over the front leg. How much, it's, it's, it's all in degrees, right? It doesn't matter where you get. And it's not about turning. I don't want you to turn today. I'd like you to stay where you can create lift here, but also not overly compress in this hip joint, not compress to the back of your knee. So you might not be very far because it's never about the destination. Where's your head? If your head's sitting right above your heart space, is your heart able to shine up into your head? You know, we're supporting this inner working, inner invisible stuff. <laughs> I don't believe that, Brad. <laughs> Come on up. Yeah. Okay, turn again. Take your blocks out of the way and we'll go into downward dog in between. So set up your hands rolling around the rim of the palm and then your fingerprints. Step back, find your downward dog, separate your feet as much as you need to. So the point here in downward dog is to get long through the spine. It's also beneficial if that, if you're limited in your shoulder mobility, you can come here. We're creating traction. You might feel it in your hamstrings, but I'm really more looking for you to get that sensation of, of again, moving your shoulder blades and your arms together. Opening up through the sides of the body. So we go from asymmetry to symmetry. You can even do this on a chair if that's your preference wherever you get that, that feeling of traction. It's an all levels class, so I wanna hold just a little bit longer. If you need to come down, come down. The longer we can hold a pose, the more we can, we can dive into the, the feelings, the sensations. You know, what am I doing here? Where are my hands? Where do I feel the weight in my hands? What's my go-to here? Where's, where am I compensating just to survive? Your heart never wants you to just survive. Okay, come down if you're not already. Blocks. Right foot forward. Forward and back here. A lot of the times I do things like this just to, to, to bring awareness. So if you're not feeling a sensation, that's okay. <laughs> but what, what can you pay attention to? Does that make sense to feel what's happening between this thigh, pelvis and rib cage on this side? Where's your body resisting? I think we get into trouble when we go beyond our means, don't we all, in all, all parts of life. We've gone too far. We hobble around in pain after yoga class. <laughs> not, not a good thing. 
there is some research that says to roll on on um, foam rollers and balls and you know the the like a tennis ball or something where you feel that um, muscle work and you can um, minimize your it's called DOMS delayed onset muscle soreness the day after or the day after that. Okay, here we go. We're going to switch it up. So we're turning on the back leg. Knee, of course, cushioned if you need to. This leg is, didn't turn. So what we did was we turned the pelvis away from the thigh. Then here we go again, boom, boom. Where my pelvis goes, I'm not trying to make it go this way or this way. I'm letting it go where it needs to, knowing that I wanna keep this leg going forward. So if this leg is here, you know, I'm almost where I was, then that's fine. That's where I'm at. It's when we try to go bigger and your body's not ready to go bigger, your body is compensating to try to do that. You'll never open the places or get stronger in the places that you want to. Meet yourself where you're at. And I wanna come back to the heart. Your heart will always give you that message. A lot of the time we ignore it. There's this little tiny voice that says, don't do it. <sighs> we do it anyway. Okay, one more time. Now, this leg walks out, turn on its side, come down onto the floor. So you can reposition this leg. I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to, to my right foot. And then I'm gonna walk my hand further out because I wanna to try to find that, that alignment, which when we were here, this is, this is arms are perpendicular to your body. I'm looking for perpendicular. And I'm also gonna show you sometimes what I see. That's this. As we explore this, it's this. Can you see? I'll go from the side. What I'm looking for is this. So instead of this, this has got to come in. Maybe your leg goes closer to your foot, left leg towards your foot. Lean into the back of the body. Yeah, you got it. You can even put your hand on a block maybe. Connect your arms to each other through your scapula, through your shoulder blades. Bring your head back in the same plane. When you allow yourself to go there, you can actually have a moment of, oh, that's not so hard. <laughs> okay, inside edge of your right foot. Okay, slowly. Make your way back up. Okay, downward dog, one more time. Oh, right, Parigasana, sorry. Thank you, Dean. Dean. <laughs> Thank you. Parigasana, this one, gate pose. So now legs turn this way. Maybe knees is a little bit bent, that's okay. Pelvis is where it is, but we're turning the rib cage and coming down this way. I'm not leaning into my leg. And in fact, actually, if I want to lean into my leg, it's okay. I've got to press my leg up into my hand to create that relationship. Top arm, you're connecting again through the back of the body. Is it more in front of you or can it be behind you or be connected to the back of the body? Everybody loves gate pose. It's the gateway to the standing poses. Everybody does. Nobody in this room loves it. Okay, let's put it that way. <laughs> but everybody else does. I can't hear anybody at home. So I'm just gonna pretend that <laughs> they're loving it. Okay, make your way back up. Anything else I forgot? No. <laughs> <laughs> now downward dog. So you can 
downward dog is always a challenge and it can be challenging if your arms are not here if you don't have this opening in the shoulders so we are going to use the chair next but here here's a great chair dog because i don't have to have my arms overhead and yet i can still be here and traction through my spine by sending my hips back that's the idea Notice in your downward dog, if you are squeezing around the base of the neck, we wanna move away from that kind of a squeeze. Yeah, nice variations, beautiful, nice. Really great, everybody. Okay, then walk your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. Here we go, Vashistasana on the chair. So your chair is gonna face, I've got my mat this way and my chair faces the side. If you're using cushions, you're gonna stack your two cushions here. If you're using a bolster, and, and some of you have done this with me, before you're going to put your bolster this way i'm loving the cushions today so i'll show you again your bolster so you want to turn your bolster johnny it goes this way we have the benefit of, of having the back out of the chair i did a little instagram post on the weekend talked a little bit about why it's so great to have a chair with the back out and how inexpensive it is so if you have a kitchen chair you know it's okay if this sticks out and then a blanket. So the similar blanket that we had at the beginning, a blanket that's folded in half. And it's gonna go this way. Kind of looks like what we did at the beginning, but we're higher off the ground. So cool. And I, and I want you to not worry about the length of your mat. If anything, I'm gonna say, be in a position where you can keep your foot on the mat but don't worry about your hand. So if you're longer, Johnny's got long legs, you might wanna move your mat or your chair towards the, this side so that you can keep your back foot on the hand. Okay, I'm gonna show you first. And some of you might've done this with me. And if you have, you can go ahead and go into it. So it's, it's the challenge of how do you get into it? I wanna be in a place where I can keep my, my, my left foot down, the outer edge of my left foot down, over the props and reach out here. Okay, come on in. The weather's fine. I'm clearing my, yeah. It's, this is not as bad as like a polar bear dip right now this time of year. So your armpit is beyond this and you're reaching out. I, I barely have any weight on my hand. I really wanna focus on the weight in my outer left foot. And just for now, keep your top right leg up. Yeah, so you're reaching forward. Connect, first of all, your left hand through your left arm to your left shoulder blade. Bring your top right hand onto your waist. And play a little bit, roll forward a little bit, see what that feels like. Roll back a little bit, see what that feels like. The nice thing is we've got the back of the chair here, but we've got this leaning this uh, angled back so it's even better another reason to have a, a folding chair and then you can take your top arm up again connecting it's not necessarily vertical to the room but perpendicular to your body Does that makes sense find perpendicular to your body then keeping in that position lift your right leg up lifting through the side of the leg like you might in half moon Still stay resting on the outside edge of your left foot. Left foot is the active foot here. Slowly start to lower your right leg down, but reach out through your right foot as you're lowering it down. And you may not stack your feet. They might be too far away, but imagine that you could come towards that, move towards that. Stacking your inside right foot, on top of the inside of your left foot. And you can here also take your top arm and reach it up overhead if you want a bigger opening through the side of the body. So we'll stay here for a few moments so that we can 
come back to that idea of the light shining from the heart, opening it up through the right side of the body. Let your head follow the arc of the body. I'm on my fingertips here on my left hand. So I'm not weight bearing there. Not yet. Where is your head? Is it too far forward? What are you feeling in your neck? At any time you need to come out, you can come out. Okay, a couple more breaths. Looks good, I can see everybody from here. That's awesome. Lift up your top arm if it's not already on your waist and then roll your body towards the chair. As you roll towards the chair, just take a step with your right foot out to the side. So then you're still supported as you're coming out of it. Then you can come up, come up into a lunge for a moment or not. <laughs> and then come and stand. Notice in Tadasana. What, what I love about doing this side plank on the chair is it doesn't bother anybody's wrists unless you're really putting a lot of weight into it. If this feels like it's too high, you've done one side, take a pillow out, do something else. So that, you know, if you're shorter through the torso, I'm short through the torso, I'm short. So this kind of works for me, this, this amount to stack. Okay, let's go to the other side. Notice too, when you're standing in Tadasana, how you're breathing. Like I'm feeling like I have a little bit more they're, there's, they're, they're different on both sides. This is a little bit more compressed on this side. This is a little bit more open. I feel like lopsided. Okay, so let's go to the second side. It's a little bit of an awkward way to get in, but once you're there. So the first part is lean onto it. You might have to adjust either towards your head side or your foot side of the mat, and then land on the outside edge of your right foot. Your armpit, though, we want the armpit, if we can, to be over so that you're not, you're not going to compress to the top of the shoulder. Let, keep your right or your left leg lifted for now. I'm completely on the side of my body, so I'm going to see what does it feel like to roll forward? What does it feel like to roll back? Where? Where's the place in the middle? Where's the, the place where I'm connecting my shoulder blade, particularly on my right hand, to the back of my body? Then your top arm can come up. Your head is going to follow the arc of your body. So it's not just dropping. That would be a disconnect. But there's a little bit of energy, a little bit of activation through the, the left side of the neck, strengthening. And then lift your top leg up. Reach out through your foot and slowly lower it down. So we're reaching out and lowering it down. And if you could stack your feet, you don't have to, but if you could stack your feet, the inner edges of your feet would come together, maybe just the big toe base. And you're still pressing your feet away as if you're pushing into a wall. Because guess what? We're going to do that. Maybe. We'll see. Might have to do another little video on that if I run out of time. Option to take your arm up overhead. So we get to be in the pose. We get the benefits of being in a side plank of opening through the side of the body and breathing into the side, one side of the ribs or the lung. What we're not getting so much is the core work. So we can learn here how to position the body for when we do start engaging through the core, instead of the chair holding us, the core holds us. Stay only as long as it's serving you. You can always bring your hand behind your head. That's another option. Lean your head back into your hand. And when you are ready, top arm can come down, support yourself. I'm going to hook my elbow here and step forward. Rotate to face down. Take your time. That's often the time when people get hurt coming out of a pose because you're so, you've gone so far beyond where you need to be. You can't wait to get out. So you get out fast. Not helpful. I don't think. Okay. 
And here we are. Then step. Okay, we're gonna put all of this aside. We've got the grand finale here. And I wanna show you first, and I'm gonna use the wall. So I think I will use the wall space. So watch me first, find your little wall. What you can do is find wall space and pull your mat so it's coming out from your wall. And if you find, you know what, this has been a lot on my shoulders. I think that's enough. <laughs> you can go back to the first pose we did, lying over the bolsters. You can go and go right into Shavasana if you like, or anything that we've done so far. So I'm going to sit here like this, and I want to bring the sole of my, of my left foot against the wall. Can you see that? Then I'm, I'm sitting in a little bit of a, a bent knee position, because if I, if I go too straight too soon, then I'm going to come off the wall when I put weight into my hand. So I'm keeping my, my bottom leg bent. I'm also going to stack my feet. I really just need the, the, my big toe base. So all that stuff that I was saying about lining up your feet, that's, that's why we're going here. I'm lining up my hand pretty much where my foot's gonna be. So I wanna be in that line. And I'm gonna reach out further than I think I need to go. Push into the wall, push into this hand and lift your hips up. I'm gonna show you another option. So that would be one. I'm looking to be perpendicular, this arm perpendicular. So I can't really lift up until I plug in. So I need to feel that connection of my shoulder blade onto the back of my rib cage. Let your heart support this action now. So let that, that the rays, let the center of the body kind of be the, the thing that, that gives you the power. So once I've connected that in, then I can lift up. So another option, and I'm going to give you this before you go into it, is to bring this foot, so left foot against the wall, and I'll talk you through it, right foot here, same thing, connect, then lift up. Okay, so get yourself set up with your left foot against the wall, with your knees a little bit bent. See, is that enough, Al? Yeah. So. Give it a try. yeah, and then stack your other foot, see what it feels like. When you set up your left hand, look where your heel is, where your, your heel is, and you're lining up with your heel. So I'm finding my heel and I'm sliding out this way. Probably further out than I think I need to, because remember when I go here, I'm looking for more of a 90 degree angle here. I'm looking more for that, that place. Then seal your hand onto the floor like we did at the beginning, the rim around it, and then each of your fingerprints, because that's really important. Plug your shoulder in and turn your body to face to the side. And see, before you even do anything, I don't want it to be a gripping, oh, I gotta get up. I want you to be able to breathe. So breathe here. And notice the moment just before you try to lift up, what does it feel like? And is it possible or would it better serve you to go here? Put this foot here and give yourself, because you can always come up this way and then come back here. So take your time, shoulder on your back. We wanna stay connected to the back body because this is now the support. Top arm, connect your two hands through your arms, through your shoulder blades. Yeah, nice. Only stay as long as it's serving you. Notice where the shaking is. Notice what's happening in your body. Notice where your shoulder blade is. Remember, arms to the back of the body rather than to the front, come down when you're ready. If we don't have a strong connection there, what often will happen is this. So when you get up into whatever version of the pose is, you're turning your body away from your arm your body faces forward. Okay, let's try the second side. I'll go this way, so as if I had a wall here. Right foot, right hand and right foot. 
roll through the rim of the palm, connect to the points and connect through your fingerprints. It sounds like I'm being really redundant and repetitive, but it makes such a difference. Trust me, trust me, trust me. <laughs> then you can stack or you can bring your one foot in front. Notice though, the moment before you lift up, yeah, Dean, notice the moment before you lift up, whether you're gripping and holding your breath. Instead, let it be fluid. Lift on an exhale. Stay on the outside edge of your foot, more so than on your ankle. Notice if you're on your ankle like this, outside edge of your foot. Maybe this happens. Press both big toe bases into the wall if you have both feet there. Connect your arms through the back of the body, to the back of the heart. Yeah, turn your body away from your right arm, Brad. Yeah, you got it, you got it, you got it. Lean your head back into the same plane. Not so much that you're lifting and opening to your throat, but just that you're lining your head up. And then come out when you're ready. Stay as long as it's serving you. Yeah, it was a grand finale, wasn't it? <laughs> you're the same age as me <laughs> I think <laughs> okay come on lay on your back for a moment feel the earth supporting you feel that radiating energy take your arms out to the sides allow that radiating energy to, to move down through your legs from your heart and out through your arms and up into your head this this ever supportive place within you. Now we'll, we'll serve you, connect to it in a way like your shoulder blades are the guards and the keepers that, that protect it and honor it. So what time do we have? So if there's any other pose as you're lying here, recognizing, you know, noticing what, what it is that you're feeling, what would your body really benefit from right now? Maybe some wrist releasing. So you can do some of this. Thumbs go towards the center of the palm and you wrap your fingers around and you curl your fists down and then open up a little bit. If you're feeling it on your wrists a little bit. The nice thing about the side plank is you only do one arm at a time. But if you go into default, and, and forget how to root through the inner edge of the hand, you'll always feel pain in the outer wrist. So there's a lot of, a lot of pieces to this, which makes me think that, you know, in a typical yoga class and go into side plank. <laughs> you know, maybe another day I'll show us, I'll show you how, how to go in from other poses. My preference is always downward dog because it's longer. Puts the arm and the shoulder in a little bit better position, that perpendicular position of the arm to the body. Maybe a shaking out. Maybe you want to hug your legs towards your chest or go into a rotation. Maybe you want to elevate your pelvis. Anything that you want to do before Shavasana. And if you're like, mm, there's nothing, I'm just so done and I'm ready to relax, then go into Shavasana with whatever props will serve you. Just wanted to take the level up just a little bit today. So many options. You know, you might've found that there were, it was challenging today but there were ways if it was too challenging for you to change what you're doing, not be seduced by the shiny shape of the pose that, or the, I gotta do it. The ego telling you, you gotta do it. You gotta do it correctly. There is no correctly. Turn off the lights for you guys in here.
and then settle in. Maybe take a nice long, slow breath in and exhale with a sigh. If you've moved into Shavasana, take some time even to wiggle around your shoulder blades so that they sit a little bit more against the back of the body. So now your, your spiritual heart and your physical heart for that matter, rest on your shoulder blades, like loving supportive hands. And your arms connect to your body. Your arms drop back into the plane that they come from, rather than rounding forward, lifting, shoulders rounding. We spend too much of our time like that. My opinion. <laughs> Let your eyes fall back away from your closed eyelids. And rest deeply. Hear the sound of my voice and if you are home and want to stay where you are, please do, please give yourself a longer time to rest and restore if you have the time and the inclination and if you're ready to move to whatever's coming next in your life to see what in your body wants to move, tune in first. And then wiggle, move, stretch, yawn. Make your way to sit. And when you come and sit, sit up on something so we can preserve that ease that you had in this last pose. <laughs> ease of, of sitting. We never learned how to sit in life. Realize that? We just kind of did it. 
So if we sit with a little bit more of an elevated pelvis, pelvis can tip forward if the knees drop down or when the knees, the pelvis tips forward, the knees drop down. So that's kind of a bit of a guide for us. When the spine grows tall, we can keep the relationship between the rib cage and the pelvis in a healthy way, the head on top, scapula at the back, it's all good. <sighs> Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Hold your heart in front of your heart. Feel, hey, here, go like this. Bring your hands this way. So feel the support of your shoulder blades at the back, a little heart sandwich, and your hands at the front. Feel, I'm gonna say the, the illumination. Trust it. And all is good. Namaste. Have a wonderful day, everybody.